Good deal. We served uh, a little over 30 plates to first responders in the police department, and that was a great deal. And uh, when we left, uh, Andrew, who's the owner over there, said, this is just the first of many more to come. So he's, he's uh, like I said, he's a great guy, and he's already planning on doing some more stuff with us. And, and uh, what a blessing that, that he's been to this community already. So if you get a chance, go by and thank him for everything that he's done. Uh, I forgot to mention on the prayer request for my wife, we're going tomorrow for the biopsy, so y'all just keep, keep her lifted up in prayer. And I'm probably more nervous than she is, but uh, she needs the prayer more than I do. So y'all just keep her lifted up. We uh, last week we talked about power. We talked about the power that we that we gained from from Jesus Christ and the blood that He shed on the cross. And today uh, we we kind of we're kind of going in the same on the same path. But what's it mean to be a lighthouse? What's it mean? If it weren't for the lighthouse, where would this ship be? That's a great song. And unfortunately, I got I got to Miss Lori too late last night. And she already had everything picked out for today. But that would have been the perfect song for today. A lighthouse is a structure that's built uh, on land, or sometimes even in the water, on high peaks, on on plateaus, rocky edges. And, and these lighthouses produce a bright light at night. And during the day, they serve as a marker to ships out in the ocean. Sometimes these lighthouses, uh, they give the, the captain of the ship direction. It's a marker where to turn, how to, how to get from one place to another. Sometimes it's a marker for a hazard that exists. Sometimes it's there to let them know that land is near. Sometimes they, they use the lighthouse to know that there's a safe harbor available. There's many different things that the lighthouse does for the, for the captains out in the water. And it's no different, really, than what we're expected to be. We're expected to shine bright. We're expected to, to let the light of Jesus Christ shine through us so that others can find that safe harbor, that others can find Jesus Christ, that they can come to us and discuss these things so that they may know Him especially as we get ready to start school tomorrow. You teenagers, I, I, I mentioned you in the prayer, and I'm going to mention you again today. You guys have shown so much growth over the last year. You guys have shown so much progress. Your love is shining through more and more every time we have an event at this church where you're involved. I want you to feel like you can go to school tomorrow and you can talk to your friends. You can tell your friends, hey, we got this we got this cool cool thing called church. And you can come there and you can you can do fun things, but the most important thing is you, you can learn who your Savior really is. You can learn about Jesus Christ. He changed my life and he can change yours. I don't want you to be afraid to do that guys. I know I know that it's difficult, okay? And I know that between uh, Miss Taylor and Danny and Miss Jewel, you guys have been tasked with some things to, to show some growth in your life. I don't want you to find discouragement in another's words. You're going to find stop signs. You're going to find yield signs when you try to talk to people. Okay? But it's not, you don't judge yourself by how they react. Okay? Don't judge yourself by them turning away and walking away from you, or, or if they ask you some hard questions that you really don't know, or whatever the case may be, don't be discouraged by that. You have to remember that God changed you. Jesus Christ came into your life and changed you and gave you direction and gave you purpose. And you're here on these grounds and at other locations where we go and you're showing that to people and it's seen. But you haven't really taking a step out yet try to talk to somebody else that, that doesn't come to this church I want you to have that confidence I want you to have that that uh, power that was given to you that we talked about last week and I want you to be that lighthouse for somebody this year I'm not telling you to go run and chase after people and, and 
trying to preach to them. Have you ever seen anybody ever have any historical record of a lighthouse chasing a ship around in the ocean? Mm -hmm. No, the lighthouses are stationary. They shine bright. Okay, the ships see them. They know what the what the lighthouse is for. Your light of Jesus shining through you will be recognized. It will be known, and people will come to you, and they will ask questions. And if you don't know the answer, that's okay. You know where to go to find the answer. You can have them come here, and we'll help them find the answer. You can find the answer yourself in God's Word. But I don't want you to be discouraged if that door gets shut on you. Or if nobody comes chasing you down trying to find out who Jesus is. I don't want you to be discouraged in your own walk just because somebody else is negative. Okay? Have that strength. Have that power. Be strong and confident in the Word, in Jesus Christ, and how He's changed your life. And help as many as you can. There's going to be those that don't want to be helped. And ladies and gentlemen, that goes for us too. That just doesn't take place in the elementary schools and the junior highs and the high schools. This takes place out on the street at, at Arlen's, at Walmart, at, at work. There's people all over looking for the light. How bright are you shining? Are, are, are we shining our light bright enough to attract those people that need us the most? Because again, it, it would be impossible for a lighthouse to jump down off the coast and start running around in the water looking for a ship to save. There's, there's some people that, that we just don't know exist, but they need us. Remember, we've talked about this before. They're, they're listening to our conversation in the checkout line at Walmart and that's the first time they've ever heard or, or thought about Jesus. Whose Bible are you going to be today? Whose, whose light are you going to take the opportunity to change by shining brightly? You don't know. It could be somebody you're speaking to. It could be somebody that's standing two people behind you in line. You just don't know. But that's just a point. We have to shine brightly all the time because we don't know who's there. We don't know who's listening. We don't know who's watching. You have to shine bright all the time. You just never know when that ship in distress is going to be passing by. And if, you're like, if you've got your light turned off, that ship's headed for disaster. It's headed for a wreck. It's headed for the reef. It's headed for the rocks. You shine brightly because that's what God wants us to do. Let's go to our first scripture so we can back some of that up for you. Matthew, where are we at? Matthew 5. You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see, so that everyone will praise your Heavenly Father. You don't, you don't light the lamp and then cover it. You light the lamp so that it can be seen by many, so that it lights the whole house. You take that light and, and, and you... You continue to keep your light burning through the good deeds that you do. And people will see that. People will see what we did yesterday at Cat's Barbecue. People will hear about what we did at Church in the Dirt during Galaxy County Fair and Rodeo. People will hear about our Friday night play days open arena. People will hear these things because there are good deeds and it keeps our light burning. And people will come. People will come to find out. They will come to learn. They will come to seek. And we will be there for them. We will steer them off the rocks. We will steer them into that safe harbor that they're so desperately seeking in a world that, let's, let's just admit it, a world that's dark. The world needs more lighthouses today than ever before. The world, uh, from the top down, folks, let's, let's just be honest while we're standing here. I'm not going to turn this into a political debate. But let's, let's just start at the very top and work our way down to this church. It's dark. It's dark. This may be uh, one of the worst elections anyone has ever seen. 
What do you, we talked about this a little bit yesterday with some folks at the at Cats. What do you do for this election? The lesser of two evils? We don't have we don't have any choices, do we? You know, who's going to hurt us the least? That's how we're voting this year. And I'm not saying one way or the other, Republican or Democrat or right wing left. I'm not I'm not I'm not throwing that out there for bait today. I'm just saying that this country's in a bad way. And it all revolves around people not having Jesus in their life. People, people walking around continually and just, if they ever had a light lit, they put a cover over it. They don't want people to know. They, they're, they're closet Christians. They're afraid to get out in the community and, and preach about Jesus. They're afraid, afraid to get out in the community and wear their cross around their neck or carry their Bible. or It's dark. It's dark. And we have to, we have to, we got to get away. We got to light it back up, folks. We have to be the ones to take the stand, to take the covers off the lighthouses and start shining bright again for our country who needs help. Some of them just don't realize where it needs to come from. But when we can get that light out there, we can start making the dark light again, and we can get rid of the darkness. What happens? Have you ever have you ever uh, turned all the lights off in a room, and you turn on a flashlight? What happens? It, it, you can see it gets light, but you turn the light off, you can't see anything. It's completely dark. God said, "Let there be light for a reason." He doesn't want us walking around in the dark. Okay, but we've got too many people that are turning their lights on and turning their lights off. Turning their lights on, turning their lights off. We don't have a steady flow of light in this country, and we need that. Let's go to Luke. Chapter 8, verse 16, just a few pages over. If you're in Learning the Ropes, on page 789. And if you're new here today and you want to check out one of these cowboy Bibles, Learning the Ropes, we've got some back there in the back. You can see Brother Daniel and Brother Troy. Uh, we can get you one on your way out. Chapter 8, verse 16. Again, no one lights a lamp and then covers it with a bowl or hides it under a bed. A lamp is placed on a stand where its light can be seen by all who enter the house. Again, we're not covering up our lights. We're not sitting there turning them on, turning them off, turning them on, turning them off. We want to be seen. We want people to know who Jesus Christ is and what He's done in our lives. What He's done in all of our lives. The opportunities and the blessings that lay waiting for people to accept them. All because they just don't know. Or they're not sure. Or they really don't believe. Or whatever the case may be. We talked about this last week. There's so much just waiting to be accepted. Amen. Huh? I didn't plan that. Just waiting to be accepted. All you have to do is accept Jesus Christ and you can receive so much into your life. So much. Jesus has so many plans just, just in here. Not to mention all the ones that we don't even know about. Power and love. These are things that all you have to do is accept Jesus and you're granted this. Your salvation. Accept Jesus Christ into your heart. Be saved. He shed blood for everybody. All of mankind. All we have to do is accept that. And you will be saved. Your sins are erased. But yet we have people that are him hauling around. They're like, I don't know. I've never really seen Jesus. So you know, I've seen I've seen black Jesus, I've seen white Jesus, I've seen all these other pictures of Jesus, but I've really never seen him so much. How, how do you believe in something you don't see? Again, we've got the faith, the faith thing that we talked about last week. If you, can, if you can accept Jesus Christ into your heart, and you can believe without a doubt what you read in here, or have faith that what you read is true, you will be saved. You will be saved. And then, and then you can walk out into the street, you can be that lighthouse, and you don't have to be afraid of covering that light up, turning that light on and off, on and off, on and off, on and off. You can walk around, you can be proud, because the Bible tells you there's going to be persecution. The Bible tells you it is not going to be easy for you to follow Him. 
We talked about that last week. The two weeks leading up to our vacation, just everything went wrong. Everything was just piling up on us. But we know, or my family knows from reading this Bible, that it's not going to be easy. We knew the devil was coming. We were prepared for the devil to be there. We stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with him and said, Later, Gator, we don't need you here. You will not kill, steal, and destroy our vacation. It's not going to happen. And he didn't. But you've got to have that in here. You've got to find that faith in here. You've got to be able to, to have faith in that what you read is true. A lamp on a stand where His light can be seen by all who enter the house. Wherever you go, whatever you do, shine brightly. Let your faith shine through. Let your love for Jesus Christ shine through. And if you face persecution, so what? You knew it was coming. God told you it was coming. Right here. We knew. So are we going to be strong? Or are we going to put the cover back on whenever it happens? Let's go to uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8. We're going to be on page 897. Oops. I'm actually going to start at 6 on this one. Don't be fooled by those who try to excuse these sins for the anger of God will fall on all who disobey Him. Don't participate in the things these people do. For once you were full of darkness, but now you have light from the Lord. So live as people of light, for this light within you produces what is good and right and true. Stand on that Scripture for a little while. Write that one down and study it all week long. This light within you produces only what is good and right and true. It only produces what is good and right and true, but you have to let it shine. You can't cover that up, folks, because the ships that are in distress can't find you. The souls that are lost cannot find you if you keep turning your light on and off or if you cover your light up and you only practice Christianity in the comfort of your home or in this church. You have to be able to get out in the community and let people see you shine. Do your good deeds. There are so many ways that this church, the people of this church, the people of this community, the people of this county could benefit from a little bright light. You, 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 look, at our, you look at our first responders, just, just as an example. I, I can no longer stomach to watch the news. I can no longer stomach to read the internet news. Every day, a police officer is being persecuted or shot. He's either being hung up by his fingernails because he was too rough. Uh, we don't know the whole circumstances, but he was too rough. We're not going to do an investigation. Here's the video, but it only shows you the part where the police officer was being rough. It doesn't show you that the guy he was being rough with just got through hitting two women and was running from him and tried to stab him in the process of it. It doesn't show you that because mainline media does not want you to see the truth. And I'm not, and again, I'm not, I'm not trying to go off on another tangent on that. But my point is, these men and women on the front lines are trying to save our lives and they're being strung up by their fingernails. They're being handcuffed by their own administration. All because people are falling into what the media wants us to believe. Be that light, folks. Get out in the community and shine the light. Be strong. Have the power. Have the will. Have the confidence to show somebody Jesus Christ. And things like that will slowly go away. If we get, if we get people back, back under Jesus' control, back on the path and the will, uh, of God's will that, that He wants us to be on. Things like that will slowly disappear. Murder will go away. Thievery will go away. Molestations will go away. Things like this will slowly go away if we could just shine brighter. 
if we cannot cover our lamps, if we have the confidence to stand on Scriptures as this, we're going to get to another one here in just a second. Uh, can I get somebody to go next door and start bringing the kids here, please? Okay, we'll wait. We'll wait. Go to page 900. We're going to be in Ephesians. Chapter 2, verse 15. What did I say? Uh, yeah, Philippians, I'm sorry. Philippians chapter 2, verse 15. Uh, again, I'm going to start at 14. Do everything without complaining and arguing so that no one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. Hold firmly to the word of life. And then on the day of Christ's return, I will be proud that I did not run the race in vain and that my work was not useless. What does that say? Let's read it again. So that no one can criticize you, live clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. Amen, brothers and sisters. That's where we're living now. We are here. That scripture is talking about today, Santa Fe, Texas, United States of America, the world. It is here. Perverse, crooked people everywhere you turn. And we, as Christians, have to shine brighter than we've ever shined before. Because the darkness is trying to creep back in. It's trying to swallow the light. But what do we know about darkness and light? With light, there will never be darkness. But we have to shine bright. We have to erase the darkness forever. Bring lost souls back to Jesus. Bring those lost souls back to worship, back to church, back to God's will. Get them back on the right path through that narrow gate of Jesus Christ. We want to take as many people to, to the kingdom of heaven with us as we can, right? That's what Jesus Christ asks us to do. That's what God's Word says for us to do is to go make disciples. Bring as many people to Christ as you can. But we can't do that if we keep turning our light off. We can't do that. We have to shine bright. Got one more scripture for you. Page 904, just a couple of pages over. Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through Him to God the Father. Whatever you do, wherever you go, whatever you say, whatever you wear, whatever you drive, wherever you work, wherever you play, do it for Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Shine a light brightly. Ladies and gentlemen, we have an opportunity today. We have an opportunity to walk out of those doors and shine brightly for a lost ship to keep them off the rocks. We have an opportunity to walk outside today and live our lives according to the good word of Jesus and God. And we have the opportunity to take the Holy Spirit outside of this church, out of the comfort of your own home, and bless somebody who needs to be blessed. There are people that don't know they're lost. That's because they've never met Jesus. That's why Cowboy Church was founded. Church for the unchurched. We want people to be comfortable to walk into our church in a pair of flip-flops and a pair of shorts, drinking a sweet tea or a monster energy drink or whatever you bring with you. And you learn about Jesus Christ. You learn things you didn't know. You come to be saved. You find that salvation that you didn't know you had. You find blessings and power and love that you didn't know were gifts to you. Ladies and gentlemen, go today and be a light and shine bright. And don't turn it off. Don't cover it up. The world is dark. It needs us today. It needs us tomorrow. We need people to learn about Jesus Christ and all that He's done in our lives. Don't be afraid. Kids, don't be afraid. Don't get discouraged when something doesn't go your way. Okay? We don't know what our plans are. God has that all planned out and mapped out for us. All we can do is continue to go the direction we feel He's leading us. 
But if someone shuts the door on you, that may be part of God's plan. Okay? There are certain things we can't explain, we don't understand, we'll never be able to. But it's a plan from heaven. It's a plan from God. The Almighty, the All-Knowing, the Great Healer, all of that comes from Him. And if it happens, you have to have faith that it happened for a reason. So don't be discouraged. Continue to shine brightly. Continue to be a lighthouse. And don't go chasing ships. Shine bright enough to do your good deeds that they come to you. We got all the kids in here now. The little didn't make it. Don't bring the little out in the rain. Everybody needs a good cleansing every now and again. Oh, you want me to go next door? No, it's raining right now. Alright, well, here's what we'll do. All my kiddos that are in here right now, teenagers, elementary, whatever. If you're, if you're a kid, y'all come up here in the front right quick. All my late pastors and elders, I want y'all to come up here as well, please. Y'all just come stand right here in the front. We're going to pray over y'all a good school year, okay? And I'll go next door and I'll get the little exactly we're going. Y'all gather up in a big circle. Huddle up. Huddle up. Huddle up. We won't get hands on y'all. Come on. Circle up. Circle up. Act like y'all know somebody. Hurry up. I ain't asking you to kiss or nothing. Let's go. Circle up. Huddle up. Can I get a couple of late pastors to go with me next door to, to pray over these little kids? 